Business-like, workman-like, pick your adjective to describe Penn State's win for a second consecutive week. Slow and steady, possibly. Penn State 27, UCLA 11 in Happy Valley. Welcome into the Voice of College Football Best Discussion, Debate, and Analysis. Based on your participation, we appreciate your comments down below. And of course, like and subscribe. Last week, Penn State taking on an Illinois team that felt really good about themselves, and rightfully so after coming off a win in Lincoln. Penn State, after giving up a touchdown drive, the defense just laid down the wood, controlled the game, and if you watched the game, Penn State had control. I'm not going to say quite dominance, but control of the Illinois game, but only led by one score, 14-7, to until three or four minutes left in the game. This one, Penn State had a little bit more control, a little bit more ease in this game as they took on UCLA, but there was still no score in this game into the second quarter, and Penn State never really distanced themselves until midway through the third quarter. However, it was pretty obvious that James Franklin saw what we all saw, that Penn State's defense could still be out there maybe a week from today and still not give up double digits to UCLA. It was that bad for the Bruin offense, of course, without starting quarterback Ethan Garbers. Let's first focus on Penn State. Drew Aller, a bit shaky to start. He missed on a couple throws, two of four out of the gate. 15 of 20, 237 through the air, and a touchdown. No Nick Singleton for Penn State. 16 carries, 94 yards, and a touchdown against Illinois. And, of course, the top back for Penn State the past couple years. But his A1 guy in the backfield, Katron Allen, carried it 21 times for 78 yards. Much made of Penn State's lack of explosiveness on offense last season. Of course, they hire... Andy Kotelnicki in from Kansas to remedy the issue. And statistically against bad teams, they are resolving the issue. They came into this game 16th in the nation in explosive plays after a ranking of 111 in 2023. But in this game, no Nick Singleton, therefore only one carry over 10 yards. Katron Allen, an 11-yard carry, 25 rushing attempts for Penn State, only one over 10 yards. UCLA's defense is actually pretty decent despite their poor 1-4 and four record. They've got just no offense. So, big play out of Liam Clifford, 57-yard catch. He had three catches downfield for 107. Tyler Warren did not have a prolific day, but again proved to be one of the best tight ends in the Big Ten and possibly all of college football. Three catches and the lone passing touchdown for Drew Aller. He also had a rushing play for five yards, and the touchdown play to Tyler Warren was another masterpiece of strategy and play calling by Kotelnicki. Again, the defense for Penn State not tested in this game. Uh, they were taking on a quarterback in Justin Martin who had only five career pass attempts going into this game. So difficult assignment. Give it up for Justin Martin, the UCLA starting quarterback, as he went 22 of 30 through 30 passes. And yes, they were safe passes, but still he threw no picks against a really strong Penn State defense. I have no doubt that this is one of the top 10 to 15 defenses in all of college football and probably better than that. Uh, basically, Penn State pitched a shutout. UCLA scored on the final play of the game, or they pitched a no-touchdown effort by UCLA as the Bruins scored a touchdown on the final play of the game. But again, give it up for Justin Martin. We don't know when Ethan at Garbers will be back for the Bruins. TJ Harden, uh, Logan Loya, they are good wide receivers, but really no downfield threat for UCLA because of the offensive line uh, having all sorts of issues with Penn State. Uh, who gave up about two and a half yards per carry in this game. Ola Wafimi, Ola Dejo was talked about uh, consistently during this broadcast by Joel Klatt and pointed out that he moved from outside linebacker to D-end, and he is a player. Wow. His sideline to sideline speed, his burst, his athleticism, his size and frame, uh, length as a defensive end, pretty impressive. Ten tackles for Ola Dejo with a, a sack and two Tackles for loss from him. Uh, another key part of this game in regards to projecting toward the future, Penn State's field goal kicking has been shaky. Ryan Barker hit one from 40 in the fourth quarter, two of two overall, so that's a good sign for Penn State moving forward as the Nittany Lions at 5-0 and head to USC next weekend. Can't wait to watch that game. That should be phenomenal. 
for UCLA at one and four. They will, of course, uh, take on Minnesota. That's a winnable game for UCLA, although the Gophers are playing much better football at this point than UCLA, despite a similar record at two and three. Minnesota, of course, could have certainly beaten UCLA or beaten North Carolina in week one and took Michigan down to the wire. Again, Penn State USC, keep it locked in here at the Voice of College Football. We will have previews and coverage of this game, both on the main channel and, of course, on the Big Ten and the USC channels all week. Please like, comment, and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football.